Hi, this is my review of Double Cross. Double Cross is an RPG that is certainly a tribute uh, to those uh, manga and anime series featuring dark science fiction, um, drama, superpowers. But it reminds me of two things, uh, Vampire the Masquerade and Goldie Crown. As many of you know, Vampire the Masquerade is an RPG, a storytelling game, where you uh, play as vampires uh, belonging to different vam vampire clans and according to each vampire clan you get different powers and abilities and they all have to keep uh, up or, or fighting against or, or to keep a masquerade, a conspiracy to keep humans ignorant of the existence of vampires and you roll 10 sided dice uh, to perform different checks and in Double Cross, you also have to, to roll 10 sided dice to perform different checks. You also have a conspiracy to keep humans ignorant of the existence of a virus that uh, changes people into super powered beings. And instead of vampiric clans, you have si uh, virus syndromes. And according to each syndrome, you have different powers and abilities. Other similarities are, for example, in Vampire the Masquerade, uh, many of the main antagonists are vampires. And in Double Cross, Many of the main antagonists are also people infected with the virus. Another similarity is um, that in Vampire the Masquerade, if your vampire uh, maybe enters a certain uh, bloodlust or, or gets uh, hurt enough, uh, the vampire enters a, a state of frenzy. And with uh, Double Cross, you may also end up losing your, your humanity and becoming a monster. And about Guilty Crown, Guilty Crown is an anime series that has a, um, a lot of similarities with this game. There's also a virus that may give you special powers and may even turn you into a monster. There's also a conspiracy trying to keep people ignorant of, of this virus at first. Mm. But there are, there are some, some similarities. They're not exactly the same. In Guilty Crown, the, the conspiracy is very short and, and everything is out in the open at, at the throughout the, the entire series, but there are so many things in common that I think uh, you could actually uh, use this uh, role-playing game, Double Cross, to play a, a version of Guilty Crown. Maybe in the future they could uh, release a supplement of sorts. Well, let me talk about the quality of the PDF first. It's actually two files. Uh, one file is the main rulebook and the other is a scanned copy of the rulebook. The scanned copy of the rulebook loads faster, it's, it's a lot lighter. However, it looks uh, pretty grainy and blurry in some parts. However, it's, an, it's a nice uh, detail that they included that for your portable device. And uh, the main rule book is very well organized. It has some pretty cool anime and uh, manga-like illustrations. And I think the only defects or flaws I found in it were... Um, there are some typos, not very important, but for example, let's say you want to say, bigger than the house. In Double Cross, it would say something like, bigger than the house, and that's kind of weird. And there are also some missing uh, letters and, and words. So, well, if you have experience playing role-playing games, you won't have much trouble with it. But someone who's a newcomer um, may find some uh, paragraphs a bit ambiguous because of some of the missing words. I would also have liked to, to see the, the lists of powers and how powers work. Uh, after the rules for this main system because you start reading about character creation and it suddenly jumps to, to the powers and you start reading the powers and you don't really understand much of them and it's only after you reach the, the chapter about the system rules where you start to, to make sense of all the things mentioned in the power section so I think the powers would have been better after the system rules and well, uh, the game starts pretty well with an introduction and you get a, a nice comic or manga um, so to introduce you to the setting because uh, as I told you, in this setting there's a, a mysterious virus that they are, are not exactly sure if it's a virus it's something that changes people into uh, sometimes into monsters or other times they, it just gives them powers over electricity, gravity, etc. And they are uh, the main characters are supposed to be fighting an organization called False Hearts, because False Hearts is uh, composed of a lot of uh, people infected by the virus, but uh, they don't care about keeping order or peace. They just want to do whatever they like with the, the new powers. And uh, the heroes of this story are the Universal Guardian Network, 
And the Universal Guardian Network keep watch over the the entire process of the virus. Who, when, because uh, a lot of people get infected, but not all of them awaken to these new powers. So they have to keep watch uh, on who's awakening. An awakened uh, PC in this game is called an overread, and they have to to see if they can integrate the, the new overread into the Universal Guardian Network, uh, trying to protect humanity and all that. And while character creation is simple according to the method you choose. For starters, this game is a simple game that actually has a lot of crunch underneath. So you really have to understand the rules. It's not something that, that you won't be able to play after reading it for 15 minutes. You really have to uh, read the, uh, almost the entire rulebook and understand mechanics. The, you can uh, create a character just choosing one of the pre-generated characters and fleshing out some things. You can also uh, use the construction method where you can um, build uh, half of the character. That, mean, that means that the character is, is made uh, up to half of it. But And in the final method that is uh, constructing your character from scratch, you can uh, build everything about that character, but it's, uh, you take a bit more time doing that. The cool thing about uh, character construction in this game is that it's not just a collection of stats. You really have a lot of things to, to flesh out uh, your persona. For example, you can uh, choose a background and skills related to that background. You can do this in a random or way or choosing from a list. And this is very important because there, in this game there are uh, relationships called Louis, like Louis from Louis from Superman. And these uh, relationships are the ones that keep your character sane. They, it helps your character uh, preserve uh, his or her own humanity. It could be uh, the character's uh, girlfriend or boyfriend and, or his pet or maybe a, an abstract concept, la, concept like uh, justice or virtue. And the character, thanks to, to these concepts, the character has a lot less probability of turning into a monster by the end of the adventure. However, if some of these relationships t turn up bad, for example, maybe your dog bites you or, <laughs> or your girlfriend uh, breaks up with you, that relationship turns into a, a titus. And a titus is a relationship that you can uh, burn at certain moments to gain different bonuses and advantages. It may even save you from the brink of death. And so it's very important to, to think through um, these character relationships and how it relates to your character background. Because in this game, it's actually pretty easy for your character to die or, or to simply get lost in the process. So if your character doesn't die, if by the end of the adventure his um, encroachment rate reaches above 100, and your character turns into a bad guy. The encroachment is, um, goes up when you use different powers, or you can't be shooting around all these cool powers without discretion because your encroachment rate will go up and up and up and it won't be able to go down by the end of the session and your character will be lost. But the cool thing is that as you gain experience, experience points in this game by fulfilling certain objectives, they are not lost. If your character dies or turns bad, uh, the experience goes to the player. So the player can spend, spend all these experience points on his newly created character so your, his character isn't behind the other characters in terms of power. And well, let me tell you about the syndromes. The syndromes are kind of like character classes in other games, not, not as, as rigid, but along those lines. Your character can have uh, one or two or, or even th three syndromes, and these uh, syndromes give your character different uh, powers and abilities. But uh, for example, a character who takes only one syndrome is going to be a lot more focused than a character that takes three so you have to choose between flexibility and, and concentrating your abilities or, or, or focusing on a specific role. Uh, you have really cool syndromes, for example, you have the Angel Halo. With this uh, syndrome, your character can manipulate light uh, to create uh, illusions, but can also concentrate light into a powerful laser attack. And it has a lot of different uh, abilities along those lines. You have um, the... Bram Stoker uh, line, uh, syndrome, in which you can use your blood to create different weapons and may even call upon a servant, a sort of, of blood golem to fight alongside you. You also have Hanuman, and, and this reminded me a lot of The Flash, because uh, Hanuman is all about speed and doing 
uh, things uh, with uh, moving your character from place to place and, and doing really absurd things because uh, your character moves really fast. You have uh, Morpheus. Morpheus is pretty interesting because you can shape things out of almost nothing. You just need like a small item and you can create all sorts of cool weaponry and, and vehicles. You have Salamandra, this one's also pretty cool because you, you, you not only manipulate fire, you can also manipulate uh, cold based attacks and that's something I, I don't like in other games where your character can only do fire related things. If your enemy has something that protects him or her against fire, you're pretty much done but with this ability you can switch from fire to ice, no problem. You also have the, the Chimera and the Chimera Syndrome is also pretty cool because you, you can change into a... Um, a sort of like a beast, uh, a hybrid with uh, maybe dragon-like arms and, and fangs and and bur and like wings. You you can change your character into different uh, like uh, freaky or nightmarish things. And well, the game gives you a good list of items. There are a lot more syndromes, um, but I'm just going to give you a few examples because this this review is going to take a lot longer because this is actually a as I told you, a simple looking game, but it, but it has a lot of depth and complexity. And they give you a good uh, list of items uh, with a PDF, but that's also a thing I would have liked to see um, fixed or reconstructed, because they give you a, a sort of like a chart, but it's divided on two pages, so if you don't print your PDF, you're going to be scrolling down and up, down and up so you can see the different values for each item. And the items are what you would expect from a modern setting with a bit of sci-fi. You get vehicles, uh, um, armor, weapons, etc. And the cool thing about this game is that you don't have to to keep a um, you you get a, a really abstract system to to purchase your things. You don't need to keep track of how many dollars that you're going to spend into each item. You just make a couple of checks and you're ready to go. Now, about the, the game, the game relies on checks. If you want to do an investigation, you roll a certain number of dice according to your stats, you add uh, different skill values, and you have to go over a target number. So it's pretty standard. Uh, however, I really like how they handle um, the battle system because it's, it doesn't feel passive uh, at all. If somebody attacks you, you can roll uh, to see if your character dodges. And if you attack, that character may dodge or guard as well. And you may use all sorts of cool powers to to enhance your abilities, your attacks, or maybe as attacks on their own. Maybe you can control the gravity, as, as one of the syndrome allows you to. And you can crush your enemies with that or throw objects at, at them. Uh, you may also, as I told I there's a cool uh, syndrome, I think it was the exile, that can manipulate... Uh, all of the tissues, all of the bones and, and organs in, in his or her body and you can create, for example, you could create some sort of, of string that cuts through your enemies just by manipulating the, the hardness of your tissue and using your hair or maybe just your flesh to attack your enemy. Yeah, that reminds me a bit of the Simitsi going again to Vampire the Masquerade. <laughs> Not exactly like that, like that but it, rem it keeps reminding me of that. And uh, after you, in each battle, you need, really need to think about your strategy because in this game, uh, the support role is really important against uh, the most powerful bosses. It's not as rigid as, as say, you, you need to have a healer and a support uh, uh, character, but you really need to think through through all your abilities because your characters will die really easy if you don't. You have to think of uh, defense, offense, about mobility. You can even uh, levitate with some of the viruses, and. Battles are pretty cool, they really feel action-packed, like you are participating in, a, in an anime or, or manga scene. And well, the world of Double Cross is pretty much like our own. It, it's a normal world that suddenly uh, uh, this virus uh, appeared out of an archaeological excavation and everything started to get affected by it and different uh, organizations and, and factions are all over the place trying to... to further their, their own agendas and as I told you the the good guys are supposed to be the Universal Guardian Network and the bad guys are the false hearts but there are also other uh, organizations with their own methods and objectives so it's a world full of intrigue and it's pretty cool that the game give you, uh, gives you a good list of NPCs so you can uh, think how to insert them in each adventure and 
and how to to trick your characters maybe you can double cross them uh, playing uh, people that were supposed to be their allies suddenly become their enemies etc etc the battles and, and the conflict feels pretty exclusive because the overheads as I told you the the main characters release a sort of like a substance into the air when they are about to, to battle and all of those all the regular people normal people uh, fall are knocked unconscious so it feels like a world on their own when they are about to fight against somebody else with with a virus the the game also the book co comes with a lot of good advice for the game master uh, everything how to run an adventure because this game is divided into scenes you usually have a scene with a, with a central character let's say character A and character B doesn't necessarily appear in that scene but, but the player of character B may uh, accept some encroachment points uh, in order for, for his or her character to enter the scene and, and help the other character with the conflict and that's, that's pretty cool that, that means that everybody gets the spotlight every now and then you also get a cool list of enemies and enemy exclusive powers and they give you a lot of uh, a total of let me check that out one two three four four scenarios and I haven't played all of them but what I have uh, I have seen of, of most of them they, they look pretty good and, and exciting and they don't feel uh, boring like oh no I have to play this scenario I wish that it was something cooler they're pretty appropriate and, and they give you a lot of room to experiment with the, all the powers and antagonists the appendix is also excellent, however, um, I wish the appendix of the main rulebook would, would have had some, um, some hyperlinks so you could navigate uh, more easily throughout the entire PDF. Well, let me give you my opinion of the entire game. I think this is an excellent game, a must-have maybe if you love anime and manga. You can recreate almost any power and any scene you have seen in a lot of the over-the-top series you know about. As I told you, there are a lot of things in Guilty Crown you can recreate with this game. And once you get the hang of the rules, it, it, the complexity feels pretty naturally. Everything uh, goes into a nice uh, streamlined pace. You just have to, to keep uh, remembering some of the values and, and the modifiers. But uh, it's pretty simple. It's, it's, as I told you, it's a simple game, with a, but with a cr some crunch underneath. But once you master that level of crunchiness, um, everything flows smoothly. Now about some negatives, let's see. I think people who don't want to look at, at a lot of modifiers and stats aren't going to enjoy this game too much because you, you do need to check some, some stats and, and the ranges for different powers and uh, keep tabs on the encroachment and uh, how much you, you've been hurt. Uh, because uh, this is a game that has a lot of numbers but as I told you if you really like those action and dramatic packed moments where where you want to to just uh, recreate all those cool scenes in original video animations uh, anime manga etc you're going to love this game well thanks for for watching my review if you have any comments or questions please let me know see you later